combination of anointing and authority. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is worthy. And he is so good. Give him the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We may settle down. Hallelujah. I've never in my life seen such beautiful people as yourselves. Turn to your neighbor and say, mm. Amen. Amen. You look so wonderful. You look so beautiful. I am telling you, there is no creature like you in this world. Amen. 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 You were created in the image of God. You are so beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we we're going just to welcome you all and we want you to feel in the house of the Lord and we are trusting God for a wonderful service today how many of you believe in God's word yeah. hallelujah yeah. there is nothing that which was created that was not created by the word yeah. so the word of God is the highest authority ever there is nothing as great as the word. The Bible says God has exalted his word above his what? Above his what? His name. His, uh, so the word of God is the highest authority on the earth, in the heavens, and underneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I always tell people, if the word can't do it, nothing will. Nothing will. That's why we, 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 we stick to God's word. Because I believe, you know, in, in the word of God. Amen. Lift up your hands and shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands and shout, Hallelujah. How many of you are ready for God's word? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hey, today we've got something serious. Much more serious than ever. Amen. Yeah, because we, we're trying to wrap up this authority thing. And uh, I've got to show you on how best authority can work with what we've been talking about sins, presence or anointing or Holy Spirit or however you can call you can call it you can call that subject but I want to try and weave the two together and then so that we know and know on how to operate in them and the good Lord will bless us is that, is that fine with you? Can we do it today? Amen. Are you ready? Amen. We're talking about the combination of anointing and authority. What is it that happens when these two come together? When these two is found in one person? When we have the anointing and authority in one person? If one person operates in authority and operates in anointing, because it's possible that due to lack of knowledge, you can run after one thing and leave out the other, and you miss God. You miss his plan of salvation, because God's plan of salvation was that such that if somebody gets born again and He's placed in the position of authority through salvation. 
and receive his spirit or his anointing, that person should be a bomb. Amen. That person should be a bomb. That person should be someone that which the devil would not stand before. And we told you that now authority is positional. It comes through salvation. It comes through being born again. Now listen to me carefully, child of God. We've got Christians who get born again and end there. They don't pursue after the anointing or after the spirit. They get born again and receive authority and end there. We've got some other Christians who, after they got born again, they forget about authority and chase after the spirit. And you wonder why the devil will scream away from you and still come back. Because authority is forgotten. So I want to show you some few things <laughs> that will blow your mind and change your life forever. Amen. Shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let's go to uh, Matthew 17. Very amazing teaching. Matthew chapter number 17 we're reading there in from verse number one, we're going to go with it down to verse number eight, if time allows us. But a very amazing teaching. Very amazing. <clears throat> Maybe let's get it from chapter 16, the last verse. Um, I want to connect these two chapters for you so that when you read Matthew 16, and 18, you should not have a problem. You should not have a problem. Just chapter 16, 17, and 18, they are so power packed that if you read these three chapters, I will say you are enough, you are you are fine, you are okay. You can tackle challenges, and the good Lord will bless you. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death. <laughs> he was talking to his disciples. He says, There are some of you that are standing with me here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Oh, God help your people. There are some of you that are standing with me here that will never taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. Some other translation will say coming in his glory. Amen. Coming in his glory. They will never see death until they see the Son of Man coming how? In his glory or in his kingdom. Amen. 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 Did you hear that scripture? He says, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some of you that are standing here that will never taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. And in, in, in chapter 17, verse 1, it says, Now, after six days, after six days, when what has happened? After six days, when Jesus stood with his disciples and told them, There are some of you standing with me that will not test death until they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. So, after six days, that thing happened. You understand? So, I want us to go with that story a little bit. The thing that happened after six days. When Jesus has told his disciples that the son of man will come in his glory and some of you will see him. Amen. Now, the reason he did not say all of you, it's because it was not all of you that so what we're going to be talking about. It was some of them. Amen. Are you there? Amen. 
Now after six days, Jesus took who? Peter, James, and John. Not all of them. Some of them. Some of them. Took and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Let's read verse 2 together. Verse 2. And he was... After six days that he spoke, he took three of them, went up the mountain with them, and then he was transfigured there. He was transfigured. There are two things that happened there. He took them up on a high mountain. It is believed that the mountain that he took them to is Mount Hermon. It is believed that it's Mount Hermon because that's the highest mountain in Palestine. Highest. It's the most top mountain. Now, you've got to listen to this very carefully and there is a reason why he would take them to the highest mountain. There is a reason. There is a reason why, why he, he, he was transfigured in the highest mountain. And this is what I want to talk to you about. Because I'm going to talk to you about authority and power. Amen. Amen. And what happens when the two are found in one place? Amen. In one person? Amen. Oh, Jesus. I, I wish I, I, I can um, um, find people to teach these things. I wish I can find people to teach these things. And he was transfigured and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. As white as the light. Verse number three. Verse number three. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with who with Jesus talking with Jesus Moses and Elijah appeared talking with Jesus who and who I'm not hearing you who and who Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus Moses Moses is the man that the Lord used to take the children of Israel and um, led them from Egypt into Canaan. As much as he did not arrive, but there is one thing that he did that is so significant. It's uh, God used him when he was... Um, giving the children of Israel the law. Amen. So that's one thing that you can mark with Moses. Um, he did not complete his journey. So we, 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 we forgive him for that. <laughs> but God was able to give his people the law. The law. That's why the five books um, of Moses, we, we call them the books of the law. Now, but that's a subject of another day. But this man of the law appeared. Amen. And the other man that appeared is the prophet. He appeared and they all talked with Jesus. In other words, the law and the prophetic spoke with the word. Mm. <laughs> That's why we cannot uphold the prophetic above the word. You will see when we read it here that all of these guys, they ultimately disappeared. Yeah, let's read. 
Verse number four. Then Peter answered and said, now, anybody that were to, <laughs> were to uphold the law and uphold the prophetic above the word, God will be angry about. Anybody that would try to uphold the law and what? And the prophetic above what? The word. the word of God. God will be angry about. Let's read. Then Peter answered and said, what, what is it that Peter wants? Peter wants Moses, Jesus, and themselves to stay in one place. In other words, the word, the prophetic, and the law. They must stay in one place. He wants them to stay in one He wants to build tents, shacks for, for the law, for the prophetic, and for the word. He wants to build three shacks. One for the law, the other for the prophetic, and the other one for the word of God. He wants to, <laughs> to build three shacks for these three disciplines. And then he says, ah, if you wish, Master, if you wish, Jesus, who is Jesus? Jesus is the word. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, three tents. One for you, the word, one for Moses, the law, and the other one for the prophetic, Elijah. We don't want these things to go. We want this thing to stay here. We need all of them. We need the word. We need the law. And we need the prophetic. Amen. Now listen. And in verse number five, the Bible says, while he was still speaking, while he was still saying, we want all of them here. What happened? Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my son, <laughs> this is my son. <laughs> now God does not talk about Moses he does not talk about Elijah he speaks about his son he says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I'm so satisfied <laughs> with this one. I'm so well pleased. He doesn't comment about Moses. He doesn't comment about Elijah. He doesn't comment about the law. He doesn't comment about the prophetic. He comments about the word. I mean, God in heaven. God in heaven says, no, this is my beloved son, of whom I am well pleased. Mm. And then, you got to see what happens after this. Before you go to verse 6, verse 5, it says, hear him. Hear who? Him. And who is that one? The word. Hear the word. Hear the word. Hear him. Hear the word. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Hear the word. Amen. It doesn't say hear the prophet Elijah. It says hear the word. Amen. Amen. So many of us we go about asking, what does the Lord say about me? Amen. Hear the word. Amen. Hear the word. There are some certain scriptures that which when you hear them, it will make you firm. Firm in the word of God. And it will not make you run around after prophecies and prophets. There is nothing wrong with, with prophecy. There is nothing wrong with prophets. It's a ministry that is upheld by God's word. It's there in the word of God. 
I will teach you on how prophecy works. And the day I teach that teaching, I want all of you to be here. Amen. I want all of you to be here. So that you know the truth. Every ministry, God gives it a mandate. And it's got to run with that mandate. You can't just pick everything everywhere. We won't arrive. If you pick everything everywhere, we won't arrive where we are going. You've got to be so, so focused in your own doctrine that you've got to learn to understand that God will always base every prophecy upon his word. Amen. If something is not based on the word, if you can show me a scripture of what you're saying to be prophecy. Because the Bible says, hear him. Now, did you see this? Can you read that? Hear him. Hear him. Let us all say, hear him. Let us all say, hear him. I speak the word by, by the Spirit of God so much, too much. I do, I do speak God's word. When the Lord speaks, I release that word. Amen. But I don't just say things that God did not say. Amen. Amen? Amen. Verse number six. And when the disciples heard it, when they heard a voice that came from God saying, this is my beloved son of whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Hear him. Hear him. The Bible says they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. They fell. Peter and the two guys, they fell on their faces when God says, now, you got to listen to this. It will shock you. Verse 7. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, do not be afraid. Now, check on what happens when they woke up. Verse 8. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus. If the church of Jesus can come to this level where we don't see any thing except the word. I'm telling you we are going too far. Because the, this was the beginning of the church. The church began when the disciples could not see Moses, could not see Elijah. Only Jesus. Only the word. That's where the church begins. <laughs> the church begins. <laughs> we don't have a church until the church are so grounded in the word to a point whereby everything else means nothing. I would wish to pause a little bit <laughs> and check with you if you really understand these things. Yeah. Have you ever checked, my girl, that when we are, we are clouded with Moses and Elijah, when a better one comes, when a better Elijah comes, we leave this previous one and go to the other one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I cry when I drive around and see where people were running after Elijah and they contributed so much and people started big buildings and when another Elijah comes, they leave this one with unfinished building 
and go to the other Elijah. Because they never base their faith on the word of God. So it, it only depends on who is in town at that time. When there is a new one in town, they leave the first one and go to the new one. Because their basis is not the word. It's on Elijah. It's on the prophetic. And we need to grow to a level where we, we understand scriptures when the Bible says, this is the only guy that you need to listen to. The word of the living God. And when we are at that level, we settle. 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 Because the word of God does not change. Amen. Hallelujah. And I spoke so much about these things, yet that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. So it's, this is just a bonus to you. It's just a bonus. It's not my main message. My main message is that Jesus went up on the top of the mountain, on the highest mountain, to be transfigured. To be transfigured. To, to be transfigured. That power... That power that manifested when he was up on the mountain, it slain Peter, James, and John. One time, on their faces. All of them. That is the power. But where was this Jesus on top of the mountain? Why? Now let's read Psalm 133. I want us to read verse number two. You will see. You will see these things. We're getting the same thing that we read in Matthew from Psalm 133. Are you hearing that? 133. Hey, but now, now I don't know what to do. The things that God is telling me about his word is so scary sometimes. Now, listen to this. It is like, verse number one says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And verse number two, it says, it's like the precious oil upon what? The head. I know many people say the head of Aaron. The, it doesn't say the head of Aaron there. Because Aaron was not, as much as he was the elder brother of Moses, but God appointed Moses to be like a god to, to Aaron, sorry. And Aaron was supposed to be like a prophet to Moses. In other words, God will speak through Moses and Aaron would talk to the people about what God said to Moses, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So, he was not the head. It was Moses that was the head. So, the Bible says, it is like the precious oil upon the head, and it doesn't tell us who is the head. Running down to the beard. Now, here it specifies the beard of Aaron. Not the head of Aaron, the beard. <laughs> what was Aaron's was the beard. The reason why I emphasize these things is because I'm about to say something that I believe will help your lives forever. Amen. Shout, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Down to the edge of his garment. Now, verse number three which is the last verse, it's very, very, very important. It says, it is like the dew of what? Hermon. 
the same mountain we spoke about where Jesus was transfigured. So the Bible says it is like the two of Hermon. Why two of Hermon? It's because Hermon was the highest mountain. Highest mountain of all the mountains. So the idea is that now when two flows down from Hermon, it goes to these other small mountains. That's the idea. So Hermon is kind of like the authority of that area that sheds its due to the smaller mountains. So Jesus went to this mountain, this highest mountain, to symbolize that it's not all about power, but it's authority first, Hermon, and the glory. Authority first and the transfiguration. Are you getting it? Authority first and the transfiguration. Now, so what does that give us? The Bible says, for they, God, the Lord, commands blessings. Where? Where we have the highest mountain, and where we have the dew flowing to the rest. Where we have the head and the oil. Where we have the oil and the head. There God commands blessings. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't get it right. Let's quick. Just give me so that I don't take much of your time. Just give me Psalm 23. The, the, the Psalm I like so much. And you give me verse 5 only. I want to show you something and then we close. I want to show you something and then we close. How many of you are getting something? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's read. Stop. You anoint my head with oil. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If I were to come to talk to you today, I would have wished you just to listen to this. Just this. I want to say something that will help your lives forever. Ask your neighbor, are you here? here. Amen. Now listen to me, child of God. Listen to me. The Bible says, you anoint my head. Now, what is it that comes before the other? There has got to be the head for the anointing to come. And this is the reason why if we anoint anybody in a position of authority, we don't, we don't put the anointing in the hands. No. In the body or in the feet. We put it here. Amen. It's because this is a symbol of authority. Amen. The head is the symbol of authority. Amen. So the anointing has got to all the time come where? On the head. So it's got to be authority and anointing. But that's not enough. We got to understand when these two come together just in one person the cup runs over. You never seen that. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. My cup runs over. I know people cups running over when they have not understood that somebody has got to have understood the authority 
and understand the anointing on the authority that's when the cup runs over shout praise the Lord shout hallelujah you got to understand that the anointing has got to come when authority is there when authority is understood when the anointing comes when authority is understood then the cup it's obvious it will just run over it will just run over I don't know what cup in your life you want to see running over. Maybe it's the cup of finances. You got to understand on how authority works and you got to understand on how anointing works. When the two come together in one person, that thing has got to run over. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you hearing me, child of God? Yes. Are you hearing me, child of God? Yes. What does anointing do? Anointing makes things happen. What does authority do? Authority will drive things that are not necessary in your life away. It is by the authority of the God that things are driven away. Amen. You command by authority. Amen. And you make things happen by anointing. Amen. Every time you speak authority should take charge yeah. and when authority has taken charge when there is no anointing over authority over the head you know things will not happen as you wish we've got to have the two together just in one person we've got to have the head and we've got to have the anointing on the head and when these two are together I am telling you something that the devil does not want, that the devil had never wished, will begin to happen. Amen. By this, we're coming to the close of this message. And next week, before we start the message that I promised you, the message of faith, God has given me a bridging message for you, a message that you cannot miss. If you miss that message, you have missed yourself because you are right embedded in that message. Yeah, I'm telling you. Amen. You people, you don't understand. You are wrapped in next week's message. Wrapped enveloped there Amen. when you come out of that message you'll be a brand new somebody that can face brand new challenges and they will never stand before you Amen. in Jesus name Amen.